Use your imagination. Use your imagination. Wave two hands. Touch your nose. Grab your ears, then touch your toes. Slap your knees and clap your hands, then nod four times if you understand. Welcome to the moon. And welcome to the this online Orkney Intergalactic Science Festival 2021. Now I'm fair delighted that you travelled here today in the spaceship imagination. And you know, boys and girls, you're going to have to keep using your imaginations as I introduce you to the Hedron family and to the points that make up the platonic space frames. Now, you'll be wondering, what's the point in that? Well, what's the point in anything? In fact, what indeed is a point? Uh, you could point there, or you could point here, or you could point anywhere or you could point everywhere to the stars and the stars are points they're points of light and space and it's nice of you it's nice of you to have brought a few constellations that you can see on planet earth up here to this fantastic moon there that's the cloud and above above me is the pole star and there's Cassiopeia and there's Cygnus just peeking over this fantastic lunar event horizon <laughs> there. Well, we're certainly having a lunar event today. And here's Mr. Boom's blue guitar that's come all the way from the blue planet Earth. There. Did you know that once there was a point nobody could see? Ha, ha, ha. You can't see me Then the little point Decided to be free Ha, ha, ha You can't catch me And off it went In geometry A point has no dimension It's infinitely small this infinite universe could be considered as a multi-dimensional ball. But a point has a position at the centre of a sphere. That's how far, far away points can sometimes feel. Infinite. think and if you're not sure what to think imagine this big universe is like a fizzy drink and all the stars that twinkle are like bubbles going pop space travels on forever will it never ever stop space travels on forever will it never ever stop isn't time a funny thing It never stops and it never begins Once there was a point nobody could hear Ha, ha, ha I'm glad I'm here Ho, ho, ho I'm glad you're here and we're all here and isn't it good that we can hear things in this wonderful imaginary atmosphere on the moon now did you hear the big bang <laughs> i don't think anybody heard the big bang but scientists that study energies deep in space have said that they can see big rings that 
that are made up of cosmic background radiation that ripples out in gravitational waves from before the Big Bang, when they think that maybe two black holes collided. And those ripples would be like the waves that you see when you throw a stone into a pond and you get concentric circles rippling out. There. Now, I think we should try and blow a big bubble and see if we can have a think, a, a, a bit more of a think about a point. Oh, that's a nice big bubble, isn't it? Now, can you see the point at the centre of the bubble? Once there was a point, nobody could see. Can you imagine it? Yes, and you know the surface of the bubble will be made up of tiny points as well. Here. Ha, ha, ha. You can't catch me. <laughs> oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, it burst. Was that the Big Bang? I didn't hear anything. But you know, boys and girls, a bubble or a sphere is a great way to represent a point because in geometry, a point has no dimension. So it's just kind of there. And you have to almost like imagine it. Now, that's just one point. Now, you're good at counting, aren't you? What comes after one? Two. That's right. OK, so here we have two points. Uh, and we've now got one dimension. A line joining two points. Lines could be curved, though, so they could be joined like that. Now, let's keep thinking about a bubble and our, make the, the point that we can't see. We'll make it disappear. Look, I'll make it disappear. And can you imagine that those two points are on the surface of a sphere of a bubble? Now, this is your introduction to geodesic geometry because geodesic geometry is the geometry of the surface of a sphere. And those two points are, if they're diametrically opposite, they'll always be on the surface of the bubble. And they could go anywhere. There. So there we've got one dimension. There. We've got a line joining two, two, two points on the surface of a sphere. Now, two, what comes after two? Three. That's right. OK, so let's imagine three points in space. Here they go. Whee! Three points in space. Now, they're all the same distance apart, aren't they? Can you see the shape that that makes? Can you see it? Yes, it's a triangle, isn't it? OK, let's make this triangle land on Mr Boom's cake base on the moon. <laughs> I've got a cake base on the moon, not a moon base on the cake. But happy birthday when it comes. OK, we will make three points land. Now we have two dimensions. Or for you older children, an X and a Y axis. And we've got the shape of a triangle there. But on a plane, a flat surface like that, you can get different shapes. And these shapes appear, can appear on the, the surface of a sphere as well. And that's one, that's a square, and that's the triangle, and also, do you know the name of that one? Yes, that's a pentagon. Okay, so these are flat, flat shapes that you get in two dimensions. Now, but we need three points to make two dimensions. Now, what comes after three? One, two, three, four. Yes, so how are we going to get four points in space? Here, yeah, look, we've got four points in space there. And they're all the same distance apart. OK, we'll make these, we'll make these uh, four points land. You can still see the triangle there, can't you? And that's the fourth point up there. Now, this shape is called the tetrahedron. And it, it's, it's, it brings us into three dimensions, because now we've got space. We don't just have an area, we've got a space defined by four points. So let me get out my wee chart here. That's the tetrahed. And its solid form looks like this, but you can't see the point at the centre. So can you see that they're the same shape and they, they cover the same volume? 
right? And so tetrahed, that's the first of the platonic polyhedra, or, or platonic solids as they were known to the ancient geometricians in different cultures, are tetra being a, a, a Greek word for four. So tetrahed is four points in space, and it's got four faces, and there are how many lines? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six lines joining up the points, right? Okay, now what comes after four? Five. Now, do you think five points could array themselves around a bubble and all be the same distance apart? Well, let's have a wee look to see if we can get five points. We'll do it, we'll better do it on this one. Um, five points. Look, there's a fifth point now. Now, are, these ones are all the same distance apart, but is that the same distance there? Is that the same? No, look. That's, that, that one's a shorter distance, so I'm afraid you can't get five points on the surface of a sphere. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I actually call, call five points not on the surface of a sphere. I call it egg point. <laughs> because it's more like an egg shape, isn't it? it wouldn't, they wouldn't actually all go on the surface of a sphere if you had five points. Anyway, we'll, we'll now have to go to the next number. What comes after, what comes after five? Yes, yeah, six. Okay, well, let's count up to six in, a, in an old-fashioned way. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, let's have six points in space. Here we've got six points in space. And, oh, look, the triangle's still there. And also, I think you can maybe see another shape. Can you see another shape there? Another shape there? Yes, we're beginning to see a square. Come on, you come and land now on the triangle. Now, this next shape is called the octahed. Six points in space gives you an octahedron and uh, I'll just get my chart out there there's an octahed and octahed has got it's called octahed because it's got eight faces uh, and it's got but it's made of six points and it's got 12 lines joining each point okay now it's a bit like a pyramid isn't it can you see that pyramid so let, let's count the faces just so that you're sure there's four in the top pyramid and four in the bottom pyramid. Four and four is eight. Okay, right. Now, let's, uh, let's count again. So what comes after six? Seven, that's what comes. But, you know, boys and girls, you can't get seven points on the surface of a sphere. It's a bit like five egg points. There's always going to be one point a different distance from the next. So what comes after seven? Eight. That's right. So here we have eight points in space. Isn't that nice? Yes. And I can, I can see that we're beginning to get a different shape now, aren't we? Between the points, we're getting a square. Okay. And you can land there now. And look, here comes the space frame. You know this one, it's called a cube. And it's called a cube, uh, although it's term in, in using the Greek counting uh, method, it's called hexahed because it's got, it's got six faces, six faces. Right, will we count them? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's got six faces, but it's got eight points in space. So that's the third platonic polyhedra, or, or pl platonic space frame. Okay, now, once we count past eight points in space, what do we get next? Nine. Yes, you can't get nine points on the surface of a sphere, so that they're all the same distance. And you can't get... 10 and you can't get 11 points so they're all the same distance apart on the surface of a sphere but 12 
12 points can array themselves so they're all the same distance apart. So let's count to 12 using old-fashioned hand talking. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so here we have 12 points in space. Gosh, isn't that marvellous? 12 points in space. And we're beginning to see another shape now. I think we've got our we've got our triangle back, haven't we? I think we've got the triangle back. Yes. Uh, and it doesn't seem to be a square, but look, can you see? Are you beginning to see this shape? Yes, we're beginning to see a pentagon as well. But we'll put the triangle there and we'll make you land on that. Okay? Now this next shape is called the icosahedron. Icosa is Greek for 20 faces and it's made up of 12 points. There we go, icosahedron. And this is its, this is its solid form here. here. Now, I was saying that could you begin to see a pentagon there? I think you can. So let's count, and look, there's a pentagon, one on top, and then there's one on the bottom. And then they're all joined up by these equilateral triangles. So that's five, and five is 10, and another five each is 15, and then 20. So there's 20 faces made out of 12 points. There. Okay, I go see you can go back there. Now, when we get past 12, what comes next after 12? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 90. None, none of the numbers are between 12 and 20. 11 all the way to 19, none of them will array themselves on the surface of a sphere so they're the same distance apart. So the next number that works is 20 points. So where have we got? Here we come, 20 points now. Isn't that a lot of points to have in the surface of a sphere? And then now we're beginning to see, we're beginning to see the pentagon, aren't we? So we'll put the pentagon down there and you can come and land there now. Now this, this shape, here's the space frame, this is called the dodecahedron because it's got 20 faces made out of tw 12 points. No, our, it's got 12 faces made out of 20 points. I'm getting mixed up. And here's the solid, here's the solid form of it. Dodecahedron or dodecahedron. Quack, quack. So there we have, there we have the, the last of the platonic polyhedron. And there, there are, as I said, there are five ways to, to divide the surface of a sphere in equally. So now that I've introduced you to the five platonic polyhedra, we'll, we'll now consider how they all relate to each other. So I'm now going to blow another wee bubble and then I'll show you how they all relate to each other. There, lots of bubbles. And here we have the five platonic polyhedra. Tetrahed, octahed, hexahed, dodecahed, no, no, icosahed and dodecahed. Now, believe it or not, that one fits inside that one. Believe it or not, when we see them in the space frames. And this one fits inside that one. And this one can grow out of that one. And that one can grow out of this one. So that they all can nestle inside each other. And I'm going to show you that by using our, the space frame. So we'll just put you over here just now. And I'm going to bring back... I'm going to bring over a cube here. Now, here's the cube, right? The hexahed. And inside, can you see that inside it, see the green lines? There's the tetrahedrons inside here, across the diagonal of that square face, and across the diagonal of that square face. 
leaking. Our see that we've got the tetrahedron right inside and you can see the yellow lines coming out they point to the four points and actually a, a cube is a stellated tetrahedron there's two of them there'd be two of them but i'm just showing you one and then inside inside the tetrahedron we've got the octahedron are at the center point of the diagonal see so we've got the octahedron can live inside the tetrahedron and the tetrahedron can live inside the cube. Isn't that wonderful? Now, we're going to, if you could, we're going to bring on another cube. And if you can see, our, the blue lines at the centre there, that's the points of the octahedron. And the yellow points, the yellow lines, show you where the, the tetrahedron, how it nestles within the cube. Now, I'm going to do something rather adventurous now. We're going to build a roof onto the top of this square house. Okay, this cube. And I'm going to show you how one shape can grow out of... Yeah, can you... How one, one of the other polyhedra grows out of the other one. Now, can you see that we've now got we've now got a pentagonal face. Can you see that? Yeah. So we've now got the beginning of this one. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll put I'll put a roof on this side as well. Or a wall on this side. Oh no, I need to go that way. I need to go that way. There we go. It's great fun. It's fun to do this in a workshop, boys and girls, because I'm sure you'd love making the... You'd love playing with this Zone Toolkit. That's what it's called. Invented by a chap called uh, Paul Heidelbrandt. Uh, and I've had this kit for a long time, actually. Uh, is that right? Yeah. So why I'm doing this is that I'm going... I want to show you the be the beginning of a that we're getting the, the dodecahedron forming out of the, we'll put one more on here so that you can see all the pentagonal faces there. Now we've got the beginnings of the dodecahedron, like I said, see, we've got the dodecahedron coming. It's a bigger, a bigger one. Now, if we take our, if we go to the centre of each pentagon, see, that's a pentagon. Now, if I go into the centre, the central point of the pentagon, and I'll put this guy in here. Okay, that's it. Please go in. Oh, dear. That's it. And another one in at the centre of this next pentagon. And another one at the centre of this pentagon. Now, as you can see, we're getting a triangle. Can you see? We've got a triangle. One, two, three. Let's see if we can get a bigger... Where's the bigger one? Anyway, I'm sure you can see the triangle there, boys and girls. Our, so if we joined those lines up, we'd get the beginning of the icosahedron. And so now I'm going to bring over, whee, going to bring over for the grand finale, the, the icosahedron that's grown out of the dodecahedron. And do you know what I'm going to do here now, boys and girls? I'm going to put this... I'm going to put this black jersey on so that you can see the lines so clear more clearly. So can you see we've got these big triangles on the outside that's the that's the icosahedron and inside we've got the dodecahedron and can you see the the red sided cube or hexahedron 
There, that one's just fallen off, but it doesn't matter. And then inside the cube, we've got the tetrahedron, and then you can see the points of the octahedron. So there they are, they're all living inside each other. I'm just going to join this up the one that fell out. Okay, so I'll leave you with this. I'll just let it spin around. Isn't that wonderful? That they all nestle within each other. Okay, boys and girls, mums and dads, that's your introduction to the the polyhedral space frames. And it's all grown out of bubbles. So, oh, and by the way, just to let you see, our, I once had some fun with some boys and girls when we, we, we made the, the, the hedron, we made the heads for everyone. And so there we have the hedron family with Mr. Boom. That was for a show at the Glasgow Royal Concert Hall of several decades ago. And there are the boys and girls with their heads lifted up. <laughs> that was such fun. Okay, well now it's time for Mr. Boom to bid you farewell. So I'm going to blow some more bubbles and send you off on your way back to planet Earth. Thanks for visiting the moon and coming to the Orkney Science Festival. There we go. You've used your imagination. Return to your Earth location. And thanks for coming to visit me. Bye-bye.